In the waning days of World War II, as the skies over Europe roared with the thunder of Allied bombers and fighters, two brilliant brothers, Walter and Reimar Horton, dreamed of a radical new weapon, a plane so advanced and so elusive. This was the birth of the Horton 229, a jet-powered flying wing that some call the world's first stealth bomber. It was 1943. The Luftwaffe needed a miracle. A machine that could slip through enemy defenses undetected, strike hard, and vanish like a ghost. Hermann Göring, the head of the Luftwaffe, issued a challenge known as the 3 times 1000 requirement. A bomber that could carry 1000 kilograms of bombs, fly 1000 kilometers, and reach speeds of 1000 kilometers per hour. It was a tall order, but the Horton brothers, both young and visionary aircraft designers, believed they could deliver. They were obsessed with a radical design concept, the flying wing. Unlike traditional aircraft with distinct fuselages, wings, and tails, a flying wing is a single, sleek structure, shaped like a boomerang or a bat. This design promised better aerodynamics, greater efficiency, and, crucially, a smaller radar signature. The Horton 229 was their answer to Goring's call, a jet-powered flying wing that could evade Allied radar and strike with precision. The Horton brothers worked in secret, sketching designs and building prototypes in makeshift workshops. By 1944, they had a prototype ready. The Horton 229 Vi-1, a glider to test the flying wing's aerodynamics. It flew beautifully, proving the concept. Soon after, they built the Horton 229 V-2, powered by two Junkers Jumo 004 jet engines. On February 2, 1945, the V-2 took to the skies, its eerie bat-like silhouette slicing through the air. Test pilots marveled at its speed and agility, but tragedy struck during a test flight when an engine failed. Despite this setback, the Hortons pressed on, refining their design. The Horton 229 V3, a near-production model, was under construction when the war ended in May 1945. However, the Horton 229's story seemed to end before it could truly begin. The Horton 229 was born out of desperation, but its purpose was bold – to restore Germany's air superiority by evading Allied radar and delivering devastating strikes. Radar was the Allies' secret weapon, allowing them to detect incoming aircraft and scramble fighters or anti-aircraft guns. The Horton brothers believed their flying wing could outsmart this technology. The Horton 229's sleek, tailless design minimized its radar cross-section, making it harder to detect. The brothers even mixed charcoal dust into the wood glue used in its plywood skin, hoping to absorb radar waves, a crude but ingenious attempt at stealth technology. The Horton 229 was meant to be a fast, agile bomber that could slip past defenses, drop its payload, and escape before the enemy knew what hit them. It was designed to carry 1,000 kilograms of bombs, enough to strike key targets like Allied airfields or supply lines. Its jet engines gave it a top speed of around 977 kilometers per hour, close to Goring's 1,000 kilometers per hour goal, and its range of roughly 1,000 kilometers allowed it to reach deep into enemy territory. The Hortons envisioned squadrons of Horton 229s swooping in like phantoms, disrupting Allied operations and giving Germany a fighting chance. But the Horton 229 was more than a weapon. It was a symbol of the Hortons' belief in innovation. They saw the flying wing as the future of aviation. 
a design that could outperform traditional aircraft in every way. If the war had lasted longer, the Horton 229 might have carried advanced weapons, like air-to-air -air missiles or heavier bombs, becoming a multi-role fighter bomber. But time ran out, and the Horton 229 remained a prototype, its potential untested in combat. The Horton 229 was a technological marvel for its time, blending cutting-edge ideas with wartime pragmatism. Its flying wing design was its most striking feature. Without a traditional fuselage or tail, it had a low profile that reduced drag and improved fuel efficiency. The airframe was primarily wood, with a steel tube skeleton due to Germany's shortage of metal late in the war. This wooden construction combined with the charcoal-infused glue gave the Horton 229 an unintended stealth advantage though it was never fully tested against radar. Powered by two Jumo 004 jet engines, the Horton 229 could reach speeds approaching 1,000 km per hour, faster than most Allied fighters. Its ceiling of 15,000 meters put it out of reach of many anti-aircraft guns, and its range allowed it to strike targets across Europe. The aircraft was designed to carry two 500-kilogram bombs, or a mix of smaller munitions, with plans for a 20mm or 30mm cannon for defense or ground attack. Its blended wing-body design made it surprisingly agile for a bomber, capable of sharp turns and evasive maneuvers. The stealth-like qualities were its most intriguing feature. While the Hortons didn't have access to modern stealth technology, their design choices, smooth curves, minimal protrusions, and radar-absorbing materials reduced its radar signature compared to conventional aircraft. It could have delayed detection by Allied radar by several minutes, giving it a critical edge in combat. Yet, the Horton 229 wasn't perfect. Its wooden construction made it vulnerable to fire, and the jet engines were unreliable, prone to failures and requiring frequent maintenance. The flying wing design, while innovative, was unstable without modern fly-by-wire systems demanding skilled pilots. Still, for a prototype built under wartime constraints, the Horton 229 was a glimpse into the future.